Welcome to the Bronx Latino History Project. My name is Stephen Payne, Librarian and Archivist at the Bronx County Historical so Society. Today is April 13th, 2022, and I'm really happy to be here with Anita and Donald Antonetti, uh, children of Dr. Evelina Antonetti, really one of the fiercest fighters for human rights and all poor and oppressed people, uh, both in the Bronx and throughout the world um, of the 20th century. I'm really honored to be here with um, with uh, two of her children. Um, and both Anita and Donald have really continued their mother's legacies and uh, their own right, both of them working a lot over the years with around issues with children and education. Um, so happy to be here with uh, with the two of them and thank you for uh, thank you for uh, participating in the project. And we start these oral histories off by asking people to talk about their family's history and background and how their family ended up in the Bronx. So whichever of the two of you wants to um, wants to take that question first, and I'm sure the other one of you might add to it uh, uh, as we go, and then we'll move on from there. Greg? Go. <laughs> well, how my mother and my father ended up in the Bronx. Um, well, my mother, uh, when, it, it, she, when she came to this country, she lived in El Barrio in, uh, Harlem, East Harlem, New York, uh, with her aunt. And then um, I believe what she told us was that uh, when she, she got married to her first husband, um, she, she, they moved to the Bronx. Sure, sure. Um, that seemed to be the place people were going. A lot of people were go, coming to the Bronx. So they were in the South Bronx, um, Jackson Avenue, yeah. Sure. Uh, so, and then uh, uh, it, after she um, had divorced uh, her first husband, uh, she and my, my sister Lorraine uh, were still there in Jackson Avenue. Um, and uh, her mother and her two sisters followed her to the, to the Bronx. So that's Elva and Lillian Absolutely. and Eva. Uh, they lived on Concord Avenue, which was a block away from Jackson Avenue. Sure. Uh, my father came later, uh, I think, it's a little like around the 55 or yeah. so, yeah. Okay, uh, came to New York. And, and, and his family also uh, had come to, some of them had already come to New York. My aunt Santos and my other aunt uh, Margo. Sure. Came came to New York. Santos lived in the same building, Jackson Avenue, and Margo lived in Concord as well. Uh, so we had we had family all around us. There was uh, other friends also that lived Union Avenue. Um, uh, Tini yeah. was Carmen Munoz. Uh -huh. Carmen Munoz uh, was godmother uh, to Donnie. Uh, my uh, my godmother Celia Aviles at the time lived in in Jackson Avenue, six twenty five Jackson. Sure, so sure. Lived too. Uh, so it was a real family neighborhood, you know. Besides being blood relatives, we were talked to everybody, and it was a very mixed neighborhood. It was, uh, you know, the Puerto Ricans. Um, uh, African Americans that came from the South. Sure. Uh, there were others, uh, Irish, Jewish, um, mostly from from Russia, uh, and and Chinese. There were Chinese people that lived in the neighborhood too. So it was a very mixed neighborhood, very uh, working class neighborhood. Absolutely, absolutely. All of that so. So um, when my mother and father got married, uh, about 1955 or so, uh, so they, they were still there in 625 Jackson Avenue. Okay, I see, I see. And <laughs> do, you, do you know much about your father's family as, as far as um, uh, which town or... Oh, uh, in Puerto Rico. In, in, in Salinas, Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. Oh, okay, so both of them from Salinas. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Actually, they were related too, well, because the towns were small, everybody was sort of related. Sure, sure. 
Sure. So uh, they knew they knew each other from from Puerto Rico, um, and my mother had been back a couple of times, I believe, uh, during the the forties or before the forties, maybe, because uh, my father went into the army. Sure. Okay. Okay. And, and he was uh, stationed in in uh, Saint Thomas, not yeah. Saint John. No, Saint Saint Thomas. I think it was St. Thomas. Saint no, Thomas. I think it was St. Saint, Saint John, and they used to go to St. Oh, okay. Thomas. So oh, was the, okay, okay. Stationed there. Uh, Donato Antonetti, my father. Okay, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Absolutely. So um, when, when he came, when he came, uh, when he got out of the Army, he tried to use the GI Bill to get a pilot's license because he wanted to be, he always, since child, wanted to be a pilot. Okay. And I remember he told us he went to uh, Miami to to go to this flight school. He enrolled in the flight school and they accepted him. Oh, and okay, yeah. when he showed up there, um, they told him, I guess, you know, with the name Antonetti, uh, it's not what you expect. You don't expect to see dark Puerto Ricans. Right? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yeah. when he got to the flight school and in Miami, they told them that they didn't have any positions for pilots. That oh, all they had was maintenance. Wow. And yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, that's so he he returned back to Puerto Rico, um, and he got his degree, and he was a teacher. Okay. Okay. I see. I see. And then and then eventually he. And when he came to New York, um, they didn't accept his credentials as a teacher. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I know, it, it, you know, just, just the other day for the Bronx African American History Project, that I, there's someone, he's the fifth generation college educated, which is amazing because, you know, the first generation of his family uh, went, you know, in, enrolled in an under, undergraduate college in like 18, I don't know, in the 1850s or something, which is, um, un, you know, just astounding. But, yeah. but when his father or his grandfather who had a master's, you know, came up to uh, New York, mm -hmm. the Department of Education said that he had a Southern accent, oh. quote unquote, and that's why they wouldn't let him teach, but, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. No, the discrimination was r rampant even, well, it still is, yeah, <laughs> unfortunately. Absolutely. absolutely. Uh, um, so then, then he, um, he found other work because my mother was involved with the union, uh, District 65. Sure, sure. Uh, so it, she was instrumental in getting people work. Absolutely. Uh, so with my father, he went to work. He worked went to work in a factory making boxes. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, sure, sure. Was um, that factory in the Bronx? Uh, I think it was in New Jersey. New Jersey. In New Jersey. Oh, um, okay. So that's a. a Quite, so quite that was a ride time. every day. Wow, wow, wow. But his, uh, my father had um, nine brothers and sisters, and many of them followed it to New York. My uncles, uh, some of my uncles, some I stayed think only there. Two oh, of them Josie stayed there. there. No, Josie was here. No, Josie was here, I know. No, Juan and, and, and Angel. Ang had stayed they, they in were, Puerto stayed. Rico. And the, and the, his and other, the siblings his other siblings there. were here. Wow, did, did they live in the Bronx as well, or they, kind of spread we, throughout? We the all place? lived in the same... <laughs> wow, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. The same four blocks or five blocks of uh, the, the South House, Mott Haven. Sure, sure, yeah. sure, absolutely, absolutely. And um, uh, what are some of the kind of uh, stores around the neighborhood that you remember or, you know... Uh, say like shopkeepers that your family had a relationship with. Well, there was one across the street, right directly across the street. There was a little uh, grocery store uh, that we were in all the time. Sure, 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 <laughs> absolutely. And especially as kids, because we could just go right across the street. Yeah, yeah. with whatever pennies we had, we yeah, could buy a lot of candy with. Did, did that pennies. store still um, keep like account books for for people? Because that's something I, I've heard about. Uh, like Elba remembers when she was growing up uh, at, at some of the stores, you know, the shop owners would still keep account books if people couldn't pay at that time. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And you would pay over time. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Of course, no, no interest or anything like that. No. Is, all of that's completely 
God. Yeah, isn't it? It's yeah. sad. And then around the corner were, was a, a pharmacy and I think a supermarket. I sort of remember a, a small supermarket, like an A&P. That kind of oh, okay, something like that. A, yeah. a, in the barbershop. Shop. And barber then shop. there was a Cuban bakery. Oh, right. okay, yeah. Okay, oh, yeah, sure. on 152nd Street. Okay, yeah, but yeah, yeah. Before the projects, the John Adams houses were built, I do have vague memories of stores, a lot of stores being there. Oh, okay, yeah, sure. And those, I think, they were completed, what, in like 60, 61 or something around there, maybe? Uh, maybe 62. Probably 62, because I think the other ones were built like in 59. The, sixty. Yeah, St. Mary's houses. Oh yeah, sure, sure, sure. On Westchester. Yeah. Uh, but I do remember, um, like there was a butcher shop there. Oh yeah. And a, oh, pickle man. Oh, pickle man. <laughs> because yeah. there there were barrels outside. Oh wow. So I have vague, vague memories of that. Sure, sure, sure. So there was a lot of a lot of commerce there, but small. Absolutely. Small businesses. And, and at least I'm sure your experience as children, um, uh, just additional eyes and ears to let let your uh, let your parents know if you. <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> oh, everybody knew. <laughs> on on our block um, where the building was in the corner, uh, going towards 49th Street, uh, there was a, a, an Italian uh, grocer, and I remember the sawdust on the floor and and um, they had all kinds of uh, Italian food you know cold cuts and and other other things that were there and the bread I remember the bread <laughs> sure, sure. but anyway I wasn't supposed to go past that store and I would go up the hill to the other street which is Trinity Trinity, Trinity, right? Trinity okay mm -hmm. sure so that was Pontiac place Pontiac place yes. <laughs> And one time I did go up there because I had a friend in school that lived on that side. And by the time I got home, Dang. mom knew. <laughs> Word travels fast, faster than cell phones. But it, we had <laughs> like, <laughs> we, the cell phones. <laughs> yeah. oh yes, and we had like at least 20 mothers in the sure. block. Absolutely, absolutely. And even if I went to my, my aunt's house on Concord, which was a block away, <laughs> it got, got home, you know, if I went by myself, it got <laughs> home before, before I did. So. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right. Absolutely. And, um, and what, what, about, um, what about music? Uh, what, what are your memories of music, either in the household or out on the street, uh, in the neighborhood? My father listened to classical music. Oh, okay, okay, so sure. I remember that, and um, and then the popular music at the time, uh, you know, like Joe Batan. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that I remember hearing that, but yeah, but we, we listened to almost all kinds of music. Sure. We we my mother loved folk music. I mean, Pete Seeger was a big deal in our house. And, uh, yeah, and. Uh, Odetta and Harry Belafonte. I, hear, I know those songs backwards. Miriam McKeever. Sure. Um, so, uh, you know, we had a, a wealth of information in the house and we had books everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Um, still do. And, and we still have, <laughs> and still, we still have some of those books wow, from wow, way wow. back then. But it was. Uh, we were always we always had people around us that were into art and music and and um, and we we took trips we went to museums uh, we went to the beach you know, we went to uh, Orchard Beach and Orchard Beach, Jones, Beach, Jones, Jones Beach Jones Beach sure uh, we we just went oh my father always used to say let's go for a ride and we'd be somewhere <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah 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 my father always had a car so. oh okay okay i see do you yeah. remember do you remember what kind of car the, the first had? one that i remember was a plymouth okay and it had wings in the oh back, wow tail fins <laughs> nice. my yeah. father used to tell us that it could fly <laughs> yeah. so yeah before before that he had a, a 
It was like Oldsmobile. a t- turquoise Oldsmobile. Yeah. Wow. I don't remember that one. Yeah. <laughs> he was, was a baby. <laughs> he was a baby. But that car, I, I remember, well, being a kid, how big that car was. That car was like <laughs> huge. And the, there was so much space oh, inside. Oh, sure. Sure, absolutely. Which now you don't have. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> but it, it was, that's, that's all I remember because we sat in the back and that was before car seat seats belts. and seat belts. Sure, seat belts. <laughs> all of that. Wow, wow, So, wow. And, and then the, the Plymouth was like, looked like a, a rocket ship, right? Yeah, yeah. And my father used to joke with us and say that uh, he could fly. <laughs> but he wasn't going to make it fly because we would get scared. Okay. That's funny. And even if we promised him up and down, we're not going to get scared. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it was funny. It was funny because in school I was reading Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. <laughs> my father's car. My father's car can fly. And friends tell you, no cars can fly. And I said, like, yeah, well, my father says it can fly. It can fly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's got wings too. So yes. You know. uh, so what what kinds of things would the two of you do for fun around the neighborhood? We play in front of the of the building. Either on the sidewalk there in front of the building or the any of the playgrounds that were in the neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we played I remember we draw on the sidewalk with chalk and we played hopscotch and um tag, uh, hide and go seek. Sure. Uh, and then... Um, Freeze tag. Right. If we had, we had roller skates, we would share one one roller skate <laughs> <laughs> and share it with somebody else. Um, or we ride bikes, tricycles, yeah, bikes, bikes, and bikes <laughs> up and down. Sure. Yeah. So Absolutely. And all handball against the building. Handball, for sure. But then we'd, we'd also go to the playground, and they would take us to the playground, and, and uh, we'd play games there if, bas- if, if somebody had a basketball, <laughs> we'd try and play with them. Sure. But mostly, it, mostly it was handball, in the, like, mm-hmm. you know, when they had those things there. And, the, and on the swings, would be... And the monkey bars. And the monkey bars climbing up and falling down, and there was no padding... <laughs> Sure, there's no padding on the ground. Those things were made out of steel. Yeah. yeah. You fell from there. You bounced oh. every your head like a hundred times before you got to the bottom. <laughs> Still here. So yeah, yeah. Cuts and bruises and scratches were normal. Regular. Yeah, we used to go to St. Mary's Park a lot. Okay, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Would, would you play things like Ring Olivia, Johnny on the Pony, any of those games? We played Johnny on the Pony. Johnny on the Pony. It's a very rough game. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, there was, there was someone uh, who, who told me, uh, he, he grew up um, maybe on Beck Street, um, but he and his friends used to play full contact tackle football on the street. On the, on the street. street. On the street. I said, that's serious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, they used to play stickball in the street as well. Sure, but those, sure. Those were bigger kids. Older, and, yeah. And older or stoop kids. ball. Oh, stoop you know, ball. You just swing the ball to the stairs and it goes out. Sure, sure. Yeah. Did, did the two of you all play together too much when you were growing up? Um, or or were, were you too old to, to, to play with him as, as children? No, we used to play. What we used to do was um, join forces against the adults. (laughs) (laughs) We used to do that. Well, we never, we never got to play really were board games because one of us would get angry and and (laughs) turn it upside down. (laughs) But if if we played with other people, like our cousins or would come over and stuff then we, then that we would get together and and do a united front <laughs> sure, like we're, yeah. going, we're going to beat these people <laughs> <laughs> that's funny um, like I, my mother babysitted my uh my older cousin anthony for a while while elba went to work oh okay so okay, he sure. was he was there all the time and he used to have I, well, I used to have arguments with him because he wanted to watch uh, 
Felix the Cat, I believe. It was Felix the Cat. I wanted to watch Popeye, and they came at the same time. <laughs> did, did you so, usually win? Yeah, because it's my house. That's right. You're going to watch Popeye. <laughs> you say, well, that's not fair. I'm the guest. <laughs> so, it's my house. I used to have being a guest a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> And then when I would go to his house, they would I would tell him, "Oh, I'm the guest. You should let me watch." <laughs> <laughs> Did they still live close by at the time, or had they already moved to Gun Hill? They were Gun in Gun houses? Gun Hill houses. Okay, okay, yeah, sure, that, sure, sure. We used to go over there, and and stay on the on the weekends, mm -hmm. sometimes. Sure. And then Elba would make us go to church in the morning. Yeah. I, she would make me put on her clothes to go to church. And, I mean, I was a little kid. Mm -hmm. this giant skirt that had to go around me three times. And, she oh. was still going to church. My mother had given up on that. Sure, a, sure. Oh, you know, a while. So we were going. We would go to church on Easter. That was yeah. it. That was it. Yeah. Or, that was it. or weddings or funerals. Yeah, weddings. Yeah. Or <laughs> if anybody in the family was, you know, the kids were doing. Uh, confirmation and communion and sure. things like that so that we would go to church but other than that we didn't go yeah 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 absolutely mm -hmm. did um we'll, we'll get a lot more into your mom mm -hmm. uh in, in a little bit but um i but did your mom ever talk much about um i uh, say like her involvement in the American Labor Party. I mean, I'm sure a lot of her friends and contacts were kind of from so, that world. There was always people in our house. Yeah. And yeah. we listened to everything. Yeah. A we, lot of discussions going on. Yeah, sure. all the time. So sure. we didn't know, you know, her her early years, she was with the American Labor, working with uh, Vito Marcantonio. And Jesus Colon. And, and, and Jesus, Jesus Colon was a big figure in our house. Sure. And uh, yes, and there were always people. People came to my mother <laughs> to ask for help all yeah. the time. For help, for advice. I'm sure. All the time. How do we resolve this problem or that problem? So. Sure. What are What are some of the kind of most regular visitors outside of, um, say, you know, family and uh, and relatives that would that would come to um, come to visit with uh, your mother? It seemed like everybody in the building would show up at one point or another in the house with something. And there was always coffee and something to eat. <laughs> sure, sure. So, and, and once UBP was created, so those meetings moved like out of the house into the office. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. then we spent a lot less time in the house than in the, you know, sure. we were at UBP all the time. Sure. So, Absolutely. I mean, the days were very long. Um, yeah. You know, we come for school. That's where we would go. Wow. Right. Yeah. Yeah, wow. And as far as, um, I mean, one, one thing that I hear again and again, did do you all remember uh, a point at which you started locking your doors or, or, or did, did your doors kind of remain unlocked um, so while you were growing up? Even in the projects, they weren't. Really lot because our neighbor used to come in all yeah. the time. Beverly, she used to she used to take care of us when my mother wasn't around. So, sure, you know it was an in and out thing. Yeah, it's that we knew everybody. We knew Absolutely. everybody on the floor. Absolutely, and it, it's funny because my father, you know, he always used to say that if you don't know how to do something, you're gonna have to pay for it to be done. Yeah, so he knew how to do everything. So the first color TV that in that whole project was in my house because my father built one. Wow. Yeah, wow. there was a company called Heathkit at the time. Okay. And they, they would sell you all the parts and he put it together. Wow. He built the cabinet that the TV went in and and then he built the TV and we had color TV in, in our house. And that was like probably 65 or 66 around yeah. there. And everybody used to come to into our house to see the color TV. Sure, sure, I'm sure. <laughs> Did, was he was he still working at the the same uh, box factory throughout all of the time, or did did he move on? No, when uh, well, when we were in the project, he was working there. Cause yeah, he right because during the that blackout, was, there was the blackout um, that 
and during the 60s. I remember my mother was so worried about him because he was coming from Jersey. Sure. And was, you know, everything was, all the traffic lights were out. And, everything and, was yeah. out. and we lived in the projects at that time, John Adams projects. And, and, you had, and you had, he had to walk up 14 flights of stairs wow. in the dark. Oh, wow. <laughs> to, get, to get to the, to the apartment. Wow. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I, 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 as it's not surprising, I mean, but a, a man who can build a color TV, like, you know, clearly what he was yeah. being sold short. My, my father grew up in, during the Depression, so yeah, they, whatever you needed, you had to either make it yourself yeah. or get it yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that, there was no, uh, um, you know, excess cash to buy anything. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. And, and then he also had all the eight, eight brothers and sisters, nine brothers and sisters still yeah. in the house. Plus, his mother uh, took in everybody. Took in everybody else who was orphaned or whatever. And, and also, people would come and ask her, Do you have food? Do you have? And my father used to say he used to eat the meat first because, in case the visita came. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, if anybody showed up there, <laughs> they had my to give up the meat. Take the, food, the meat off of everybody's plate to give to the visit. Whoever sure, came. sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. So both my mother and father came from a home where they helped other people. So absolutely, absolutely. And that's and that's the house we grew up in. Absolutely. So in, in John Adams' houses, did either of you play like around the building? Was a building like if maybe the roof or the staircase or anything like that? Uh, but, not in the staircase. Yeah, yeah No, yeah. in the hallway. In the, the hallway. hallway. Yeah. Yeah, we would play in the hall. We we even trick-or-treated in the halls. Oh, the okay, sure, sure, sure. <laughs> yeah. we, Absolutely. We, what you can't do now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, um, yeah. And we played in the play. There was a playground right in front of the building because we were sure. in the first building there, 745. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Where the, uh, and, the, and we used to play right right there um yeah but again you know it, my parents knew everybody sure. <laughs> that was there so sure so we were always comfortable there and we, and we knew people in other buildings in the complex also absolutely absolutely uh, oh. so and uh other things we did we we went to the YMHA uh, for a summer camp. Sure. Uh, I go back a little bit. <laughs> so it, I went to PS5, which was not, was down the block. And I went to kindergarten, first grade, and uh, second grade, and third grade there. Uh, but in between all of that, that's my mother's involvement in the parents' association there. Sure. Um, they wanted them. The administration wanted the parents just to have bake sales or things like that. Of course, yeah. yeah. And not demand. Tea parties and not be involved in the school. Absolutely, I know. So she had other ideas. <laughs> of course. <laughs> so they threw me out from that school. Oh, yes, okay. he was expelled so, from kindergarten. The thing wow. was that I, I'm born in January, right? So sure. September comes, I'm four, but you don't start kindergarten until you're five. Yeah. So that means I would have been behind a year. Yeah. So in September, I was four, my mother put me in school. Sure. But due to her organizing of parents and demanding better services for the children, they said, oh, he's not eligible to be here. He has to get out. So th then I went to kindergarten at the Y. MHA. Yeah. Right. I went to kindergarten that year there. Okay. Then, sure. Um, that was 1130 Grand Concourse with Bronx Works. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, yeah. and then f from there, we got a full scholarship to Bank Street School for Children. Oh, okay. So we went there. And okay. it was probably better to keep us out of the public school system because. You know, they yeah. didn't really like my mother much. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. To expel yeah. a, a four-year-old, yeah. like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, they, they used that excuse about his age, but what I heard in the conversation prior to that was that he was, what they said was disturbing element. <laughs> they said. A disturbing But element. what I heard in my 
uh, seven-year-old mind was scurvy elephant. <laughs> I, said, scurvy oh. <laughs> I was outraged. I was calling my brother a scurvy elephant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the disturbing element is a much better one than scurvy elephant. <laughs> so, wow. so, yeah. But, um, so, and Donnie went to a number, a number of schools before uh, Bank Street, Street yeah. Uh, yeah. contacted my mother and said, we, we want they were they were trying to diversify their their, uh, their school, school for, for children. children. Oh, okay, okay, sure. So we were uh, two of three people uh, of color. People of color wow, in the school. Wow. And how, how how big was the school at the time? How many it was very were? small. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, it was a small school. It was they, down, it, down on Bank Street. Yeah, and, yeah. And it was uh, how many classrooms were there? Not a lot. There were like two for each grade. Great. So yeah. maybe okay. if there was ten, it was a lot. Okay, I see. I see. Would would you all take the subway down there? Mm-hmm. My father. Drove My father us. drove us every oh, okay. every morning. He would drive us there. Okay, sure, sure, sure. And then, um, if he couldn't pick us up, which yeah, our neighbor used to pick us up. Okay, I and see. Then we would take the train back. I see. And and what what was this, what was your experience like there, at Bank Street? It was a different world. Yeah, I bet. I bet. <laughs> because these. These, well, I uh, made up a lot of stories there. <laughs> <laughs> because these kids used to go away and go on trips and go on boats and you know, okay, and yeah. we did too. Their country, I was right along with them. Country house. <laughs> their country <laughs> house for the weekend and stuff like that. Wow. And, yeah. No, but they were, you know. Um, so I made up the stories right along with them. <laughs> but what they didn't know, they didn't know how to jump rope. Play basketball. Any of the street games? No, no, nothing. Music. No. Wow. Even in hopscotch, they didn't know. But there, there was a playground they used to take us to, and there was a public school there. And when the public school let out, they would go, they would, you know, they would charge the, the kids <laughs> from the private school <laughs> and clean out the park. And I remember because they used to run back yeah. to the school. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I used to stay there, like, why are you running? Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, but when the public school let out into that playground, forget it. Everybody used to run. <laughs> and we were like, no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. But it was really, you know, it was an eye-opener because they were very, very well off. I mean, yeah, yeah. They were, uh, one of my friend's uh, mother used to drive a Rolls Royce. Wow. And she took us, because my... Because um, my mother uh, was working for the Puerto Rican uh, Development Corporation at the time, and it was on 72nd Street, so they lived on West End. And the mother dropped us off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and we were, we were in the, the sunroof waving, waving to mom in this Rolls Royce. It was really incredible. And then that same family, I went when I was older and could move around by myself. We went to their house, and the 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 two it was two girls, and they they couldn't play in the living room. Wow. They told me they could only go in the living room on holidays. <laughs> and I said, "What? <laughs> what do you mean you can't play in the living room?" Yeah. Mm-hmm. But a, they had a they, apartment and no rooms off limits, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, they had um, their own room, yeah, with a, a a table, you know, where they would eat their their meals, and they had their own bathroom, and I was, <laughs> wow, it, it just I couldn't get okay. over it. And uh, I remember my mother telling me, you, you, "You know, people live differently." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said. I couldn't believe that because we were all over the place. Yeah, absolutely. We were all, over, and it, and that wasn't only in our house; it was in everybody's house. Yeah, we were all over the place. It was literally like an open <laughs> neighborhood compared yeah. to a, a yeah. very. I couldn't. Of, yeah. I couldn't believe it. Wow. But um, like most of the, you know, and your friends too, were living in West End in these buildings yeah, yeah. with doormen and all that. Okay. okay Although we sure. did have that in the Bronx, I remember when we were going to camp and. In the YMHA, sometimes the bus would go and pick up uh, some of the uh, other uh, s- uh, s- campers, and um, 
on Jerome Avenue, right there next to the stadium. Oh, okay. Or okay. not next to the, it's next to the stadium now. But, yeah. But, but then those those buildings had doormen. Okay, sure, sure, sure. They were really fancy, you know, the Art Deco buildings Absolutely. and all. Absolutely. <laughs> they were pretty fancy buildings. Yeah. Some of the sunken yeah. living rooms. I guess they still do. And they yeah. do, yeah. They, do. they yeah. do have yeah. the sunken living rooms and all of that. But yeah, those are things you remember. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And so, where, where did where did the two of you go from Bank Street? Did you go to different schools uh, after that, or did you all uh, remain at the same? The same <laughs> so Bank Street went up to junior high. Oh, okay, went up to junior high. Okay, yeah, okay. So, so we were there great. for a while. A while. Okay, mm -hmm. and then high school. Uh, for me, it was a disaster. So, yeah, they didn't, didn't go too well. Sure. See, because in Bank Street, it, the, their philosophy is they, you learn by doing. Yeah, yeah. And when we got to high school, it was like, you have to listen to me because I'm the teacher. I said, really? <laughs> <laughs> Which so, high schools were they? Elizabeth Irwin High School. Okay, okay. Was um, for both of you at first? Or? Yeah, first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then I went to Truman in Cove City. Okay, sure. And then I went to Monroe. Okay, okay, I see. So Donnie, Donnie was lucky. He got to go to public school. because I wanted to go to public school. I wanted to go to Morris High School. And my mother said no. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure I'm Because sure she was afraid. In the neighborhood. She was afraid the retaliation yeah. against the activities, you know, Absolutely. because they were training parents how to go into school and, and evaluate yeah it's my child learning yeah uh, what are you teaching my Review child the curriculum yeah. in the school and all that. wow wow it's also interesting too because you know both of you being at Bank Street you saw how and you, your mother saw how you know education works for you know for the wealthy a very kind of mm -hmm. open, robust curriculum, um, and and yeah, demanding the same thing for poor and working class people. Right. Just yeah, wasn't in, and then if you spoke, if your first language wasn't English, mm -hmm. you were marginalized. Absolutely, you know, either put in the, the lowest class, the lo mm -hmm. or, or or the disabled. Yeah, yeah, class. Absolutely, because you didn't speak English. Absolutely, I mean, it, it was it wasn't a good a good thing, but. Um, so, you know, we, uh, besides being at Bank Street, after, after school, we were in United Bronx Parents. So. Sure. And, and since my mother's consultations moved out of the house, we had to learn how to answer the phone properly. <laughs> <laughs> Take messages. Sure. All of that. And then in, in, um, in the office, we, we... Uh, if there was a, uh, an event going on and flyers were being run off we, and we needed to collate material, it was all done by hand. Wow, there weren't machines wow. at the time to do it. Sure. So we were put to work. Yeah. And we also learned how to sit at the switchboard and, and transfer calls and all of that. Wow. Um, and Elva was the Elva was the office, office manager, manager and she she was a drill sergeant. <laughs> she, didn't, she didn't take anything from anybody. <laughs> but we had, we had the run of the place pretty much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. But we were in the middle of everything. But we right? were always expected to work. Sure, always. always. Sure. As a matter of fact, my father used to tell us, you know, since this is you know since it's family run. Yeah. Um, you're expected to do more than anybody who is an employee there. Okay, okay, Always. sure. Always. Sure, absolutely. And did, did your father have much time to help out at, at UBP? He, he, early was, he on? used to integral to UBP. Wow. He used okay. to translate all the documents into Spanish. Wow. Like from Spanish to English or mostly English to Spanish. Wow. So all the, all the materials for the parents organiz or organizing, he would translate into Spanish. Wow. We always put out everything in English and Spanish. And, and by hand, because it was two dictionaries and two yeah. thesaurus and the languages wow. going back and forth. He would spend nights, nights doing, doing that. Wow, yeah, I was just about to say from what it sounds like, none, none of y'all slept. <laughs> no. Not really. And then if anything broke, he yeah. was fixing it. Wow. If the machines broke, he would fix them. If, if, if something had, shelves had to be built, he was building them. 
Sure, but, sure. But what was good about him is that he was working with people, uh, and especially younger people, and yeah. showing them how to do, this is how you measure, this is how you cut, you know, this is how you put it together and, and all of that. Wow, wow. So he, he did quite a lot, lot. And then as the organization grew, he was, and he, and he was one of uh, the first trainers of the parents. So he r ran the classes, uh, the training of how to go into the school. And he did it in, in two languages, in English and, and, and Spanish. Um, and whatever needed to be done, if, you know, people had to be taken from one end to another in the car, he would take them. Um, uh, if uh, they needed supplies yeah. for whatever, he'd go get the supplies. Yeah. Uh, he was um, an integral part of the organization. Okay, wow, wow, wow. And who, who are some other um, uh, important figures in the early years of UBP, um, aside, of course, from your mom and aunt and father? Um, Estela Rodriguez was the fiscal officer for the organization. She was a good friend. And she knew every penny was. Okay, she made sure. sure every penny was accounted for yeah. because in those days you had to because Absolutely. otherwise they shut you down in a minute. Absolutely. And I, I remember <laughs> she one day out her outrage because they said you know they wanted all of the records the next day like nine o'clock in the morning and yeah. the outrage that it was anything would be wrong but she made sure everything was right every payroll was met. Sure. My mother, they had a great relationship never with the missed banks. The, never oh, missed okay, the okay. Great relationship with the banks. And, you know, so they never missed the payroll. Wow. And, and the landlord of the, uh, of the building also. Sure. Because they were renting uh, two apartments in, in uh, 791. 791 Prospect. 791 that was Prospect. Elias Carmen. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay, we we have we have um, his papers here. Yeah, it's like ninety boxes of material. Yeah. Um, yeah. So she had my mother was able to negotiate good. That that was one thing. My my mother was uh, like a general, moving armies. You know, she knew how to. Ta you know, a master tactician. I know. Uh, <laughs> and you know, it's funny because. And you, also a diplomat, a yeah. consummate diplomat. She Absolutely. was. Absolutely. I mean, if somebody, wa an employee wasn't working out, she'd find them another position that would uh, use their talents. <laughs> Elba told me that, and that, that's, that's remarkable. You know, it's I like mean, she never, you're fired out. Yeah, yeah. No, this is bad for you. You're going to achieve more here. Yeah, yeah, wow. <laughs> wow. It's, it's funny because um, I, I did an oral history uh, maybe a couple months ago with one of Elba's. Uh, uh, fellow co-op city residents and one of your mother's, you know, lo longest um, friends. They actually went to elementary school together, mm -hmm. um, and she told me uh, about both of them organizing a, a pageant even in elementary school. So, oh yeah, <laughs> I, I love that story. But yes. <laughs> so Do even, Doña Dolores. That's yeah. right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So even even has no. I mean, that's yeah. That was what she, how she was, and and that's where we grew up in that environment. So, I I can say for me, and I know Donnie says this too. Everything I learned, <laughs> and I learned there in United Bronx Parents, yeah. um, because other jobs that I've had, they keep asking me, how do you know these things? <laughs> <laughs> you pee -pee. I did it before. Yeah. Right. you know how to fix a a, a copier machine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I said that when you're a nonprofit, you have to live in your means because Absolutely. there's no money to buy a new one. Absolutely. Um, so how to organize a, an event and things like that? We learned it from from masters there. Sure. And it, it's not like uh, she did everything herself or my father did everything. It was always in conjunction with the rest of the community and people. We. To, to this day, I have people coming up to me telling me, if it wasn't for your mother, I wouldn't have my profession. Or Absolutely. I would have never become a teacher. Or, or the guy from La Paz, uh, 
funeral home, he said. Oh, yeah. yeah. He said, I would never have had my business if it wasn't for your mother, because she helped him when she, he was in the union to get his first job in oh, this country. okay, sure, wow. Yeah, so... so. Yeah, and, and there's a, um, a body shop in on Southern Boulevard, and the, when I walk in there, the guy always tells everybody, oh, this is Donnie, you know? I used to go eat at UBP, and, and sometimes that was the only thing I ate all day mm -hmm. because they always had food there. Absolutely. And, and, and you know, yeah. so they, you know, I still run into people, you yeah. know, that, that tell me that, oh my God, they used to make the best brownies there. Yeah, you know? absolutely. I've, I've, heard, I've heard that from, you know, numerous, numerous people who, as a child, they just, you know, they just remember their parents saying, "Oh, why don't you, why don't you go to UBP?" But it's only after the fact that they realize, "Oh, well, when I wasn't at UBP, there might be days where I want to, want to eat." Um, and you know, no, we, we always had food. And yeah. I remember and I got funding from uh, USDA to have like an evening meals program. Okay, sure. For kids. Wow. For kids. But, yeah. But we fed everybody. Anyone was welcome. We, yeah, yeah, we yeah. fed everybody. Anybody who walked through that door. Was, could get something to eat. Wow. Yeah. Who, who were the people who usually did the cooking at UBP? <laughs> you know Donnie I mean? was a master cook. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, but there were other, other women yeah, there that was were other there. People that were, they were um, there. Obviously. That helped. Yeah. Uh, you know, everybody helped. You know, it's like my mother used to tell all, all of the employees, you were hired for this, but if we need you to clean the toilets, you're going to do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And just be ready. Absolutely. And since it was so embedded in the community, I mean, it was just a natural. And and then it, for us, it was double. You know, you're gonna help. <laughs> Anything. <laughs> like my father used to come. Uh, he was the uh, uh, director of the daycare center when it when it opened. And he would need letters that had to go down town, things like that. And he would come bring them to me and say, make sure that this is this is all correct, that the language is correct and the, and the punctuation and the grammar sure. and all of that. Um, and then also, when it came time to write proposals for funding, yeah. that was brought to me. Type this. No, change that page and put this. And this is before word processing. <laughs> it's much more labor. I, I learned how to squeeze words in between so I wouldn't have to type the whole page <laughs> again. Wow. I, wow. Was, I was a master at that. I could cut and paste before uh, before <laughs> word processing yeah, came. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, I used to be the check for the grammar and the the wording to make sure that it made sense that words were missing or anything like that. Sure. So, sure. but that always happened at night, of course, because it had to be in early in the morning. <laughs> wow, wow. Yeah. Um, so, what are what are some of the earliest um, programs aside from just all the daily activity and organizing parents and um, and things like that? What are some of the earliest programs that you all remember? At UPP. The Summer Youth Employment Program. Sure. Um, but it's also like the all the after school programs. There were after school programs. There were um, high school dropout program. That was one of the last jobs I had. Okay, sure. Uh, so that to help them get their uh, equivalency diploma, and and also teach job skills. Yeah. As well. Absolutely, and I know. What, one of one of my favorite videos of your mom is um, from maybe 72 or uh, 71 or 72. I think 72 because it was shortly, you know, it was a special that was filmed um, a few months after Black Benji's death. And oh, all. with and the gangs down there. Yeah. And <laughs> that I, was fun. <laughs> and and I, I know that, you know, your, that UBP um, really supported and, and tried to try to reach out to uh, we, uh, gang members. We supported everybody. Well. They were part of the They were part of the community. community. Absolutely, absolutely. As well as being young people absolutely. looking for their way in, in life. Yeah. Um, yeah, Black Benji was killed, it was terrible. 
But I, I, that I remember very clearly because we, we'd carpooled all of them downtown to the uh, Channel 13 studios. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I remember I was with my sister and she was driving like a, a wild person. And, <laughs> and the guys were in the back and I, their eyes were like, because <laughs> she was going in and out of traffic so we would get there fast <laughs> yeah yeah and she turned to me and she said that's a good thing i learned how to drive yesterday <laughs> <laughs> but they, these big tough guys were so so scared so but i i remember that clearly because i was i wasn't part of the the show but i was in the the audience sure 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 yeah and yeah. they, and they were always in the office too. I mean, they Absolutely. they always came. Absolutely. And and the thing about United Bronx parents is, is people came. Like my mother's secretary, she like she was running away from an abusive uh, relationship. She came all the way from Puerto Rico and she wow. landed in United Bronx parents. Wow. And and with a baby. Wow. And uh, she was given food. She was given clothes. She was put. In, she was um, given a place to stay. Yeah. Her mother made, found somebody who would give her a room to, to, to stay until she could, could get on her feet. Wow. It was literally a shelter for a shelter. the community. And, yeah. and she helped people that later became big deals, like, like Congressman Serrano, Absolutely. Assemblywoman Carmen Arroyo. Sure. All, a lot of people. Absolutely. That have, were able to to get a leg up and and continue on. Sure, but there's a lot of s stories about people that wound up there that were in dire need. Yeah, you know, um, there was one woman who ran away from the Ecuadorian embassy. Oh, okay. she was practically there as a slave. Oh, wow. She was raped there and wow. was pregnant, and she wound up in UBP. Yeah. Wow. And her daughter grew up with us there. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And she was a wonderful person. Yeah. Like, a, like she used to look out for me. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know. Yeah. I remember that one day I was in the daycare center and she cooked me fried eggs with white rice. And the head cook there got angry with her because he told her that was poor people's food. Don't give him that food. And he said, she kept saying, but he likes that. And he asked me for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I used to love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, absolutely. And she used to make sure I had coffee and all. Yeah, she was a, a, a beautiful person. And, and her daughter, you know, grew up there with us. And then the, the receptionist in the daycare, she was fired from a job because they told her she was too ugly to be at the front desk. Oh my God, wow. Could you imagine that? Mm. And, and that's just where she was in the daycare. And she was there till she retired. Wow. Yeah. And she was a wonderful person too. She was from Honduras. Sure, yeah. sure. She was a great person too. Well, Henia. Yeah, yeah. No, because when I see her, she, she's always... Your mother. If yeah. it wasn't for your mother. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And absolutely. your and your father, because the father was still working at the time when she came. Um, but it it was, uh, you know, it was it was a great experience, and I, I'm grateful for it. Sure. I'm grateful for the house we have because they bought managed to buy a house. Wow. <laughs> Wow, is, is that where you moved from John Adams or? Yeah. Okay, okay. Went to uh, Booty Crest Avenue. Okay, okay, sure. In Highbridge. Sure. And we're still there. We wow. we share we share the house and my son Raul also. Yeah. Um, but I, I'm grateful every day to my parents for providing you know a life and also for showing you know, my mother always used to say you know you help. Even when you think you have nothing, yeah. If somebody needs help, you help. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and she, not only told that to us, she told it to everybody. Sure, sure, absolutely. So, what are some of the things at, at UBP? You you mentioned that um, uh, that uh, white white rice and eggs is, is something that, that you would eat, but that, mm. that maybe one of you served to others. What are some things that you would serve to the community at UBP as far as food goes? Well, the food was 
mostly Spanish food. Sure, I mean, sure. Puerto Rican cooking. Now, our chef at the daycare was Puerto Rican. The people who worked in the kitchen, uh, for the most part, you know, they were all Hispanic. Mm -hmm. We had a, a woman from uh, St. Vincent who right. used to make like breaking stuff like hot cross buns okay. and all kinds of delicious like pastries yeah. and all kinds mm -hmm. of stuff like that. It was always full meals and it, sure. it usually wasn't what you would consider American food. It was sure. Spanish food, you know, sure. rice and beans and, you know, stewed beef and, mm. and, and the, and the classes for the children were all bilingual. How can Absolutely. Spanish, Spanish, English. Yeah. All, all, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. We have one parent ask, uh, what does bruja mean? <laughs> Why are you asking? <laughs> My son called me a bruja. <laughs> it's great, Bob. Wow. wow. And, and, and yeah, I mean, I, I, at, especially, especially at the time, even now, I mean, yeah. bilingual education is so, so rare, but especially at the time, I mean, it, it must have been the only, one of the, maybe the only place. Most yeah. likely, because um, you know people are trying to survive, so they they want to know English. Yeah, absolutely. So most of I think the daycare centers were English based, but uh, but they were um, the, the United Brands Parents Daycare Centers were. Yeah. And they were we had a family daycare center too. Yeah. So oh, okay. Okay. Sure. Sure. Nice sure. Also. Sure. So we had those programs. But the the biggest program we had, you know, the, you know the the Black Panthers and the Young Lords created a feeding program. Sure, absolutely. When what they were called the, the most threatening thing to uh, U.S. national or U U.S. national was security. Was to feed, feed people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So, um, so when the or to demand healthcare. Uh, yeah, demand for healthcare, sure. Right. So when the, the U.S. government decided they were going to do a summer feeding program because it was necessary, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They weren't going to give them the funding, the Black Panthers and the Health Lords, the funding. So they gave, they gave it to United Bronx Parents. Sure. And um, we served the whole city, every borough. That first year was <laughs> really, really wild. <laughs> I mean, those those meals had to get to every organization that had requested the meals. It had to be good. It had to be, um, you know, edible food. And sure. we had to make sure that the people who were Jewish and Muslims were not getting pork. Absolutely. Or anything yeah. that had pork in it, like those those buns that they used to have, the, the breakfast buns. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, had, yeah. Had pork in it. had had lard in it. Yeah, yeah, well, sure, sure, sure. make sure of that. And every truck had to have a route, and every it was it wow. was it was an incredible thing. The five bars, so and the the, the thing bars. was, um, they didn't have the restriction that it was just for children. Oh, okay, okay. So I, everybody was getting food. <laughs> wow, so what was this 1969, 1970, something like that? I'm gonna say it was 1971 or 72. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. But and so, UVP had only been around not even for a decade by that point, no, right? No, not so, yet. Wow. No, but but my mother had gotten funding from um, the community development agency at the time for the city it was the the community action um, uh, site where the federal uh, dollars from the anti-poverty program would sure. come, the Economic Opportunity Act. Sure. And um, and guess where I work now? I work for Department of Youth and Community Development. And guess what? That program is still alive and kicking. Wow! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not. It's not. Uh, uh, it's not CDA. And you know, it was a common, uh, uh, Department of Youth and Community Development. CDA came in and the youth services and the employment uh, program all won okay, there. Sure, sure. And that happened later in the 90s. Yeah. Um, but so that's where most of her funding from all of the programs, the different programs like uh, 
uh, what was it, the, the youth program, Charter after Charter school program. program, what else programs was it, it was uh, the community development program, Sure. Uh, where we had people that, uh, you know, whatever, whatever they came in, it w it's what's called now today's the Healthy Families Program, because whatever service a uh, person needed that walked through the door, we had to find a way to oh, help. Okay. I Even see. if it meant we had to refer out. But what was different in United Bronx Parents was that if somebody came in with a problem, let's say with education, uh, the caseworker would go with that person to the school to make sure the problem was resolved. Oh, okay, okay, I see. And that. if there was need for translation, provided the translation. Uh, if somebody needed uh, public assistance, we would go with them. Sure. If it was um, unemployment insurance, go with them. You know, whatever the service was that, you know, housing, yeah. if it was an issue with the landlord, it was an issue trying to get housing, all yeah. that. We did, we did everything there. Wow, wow. We did everything. Wow, I mean. But that, that summer feeding program was good because then it was condensed. The government said, oh no, now you can only work in your own borough. It's only for children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If there was anything left over. Sure. But besides that, the vendors who were providing the food had to give jobs to our youth. Okay, okay. I so see. people were placed in those places making the sandwiches. Wow. Loading the trucks. Wow. Um, even if we were, even if they were like out in Jersey or something like that, yeah. we would set up vans that would take people to work out there. Okay, okay, sure. Wow. So so we made was, the vendors pay for that to yeah, get the contract. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. They would get the contract, but they had to provide jobs. Wow, wow. And transportation. The logistics of all of it. I mean, I can't even imagine. So I, then, then she decided we were going to do breakfast and lunch. <laughs> <laughs> so even in the Bronx, that was a big deal. And yeah. I, I was the one who took a map of the Bronx and did all the truck the truck routes. Okay, sure, sure, sure. Wow. <laughs> and I was the one that if something happened, a truck broke down, another truck had to go out and go and and, we, and then uh, Don was the in charge of the warehouse. <laughs> okay, okay, sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah. It was interesting, especially during the second blackout. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, in seventy seven. Mm hmm Okay, sure, sure. So, so those jobs <laughs> They were, they were uh, um, <laughs> we didn't we didn't sleep during the summer. <laughs> no, I'm sure. Because I'm sure. to do breakfast, you had to be there at four o'clock in the morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Wow, wow. So at, over the years, as, as UBP went on throughout the throughout the seventies. What are ways in which you saw the community around UBP affected by some of the city's, you know, well, austerity yeah, program, the, the fires, and the fires, and everything else? Austerity. I mean, well, they cut services, and, yeah. and you know, in UBP, even if there was funding or there was no funding, if somebody walked in the door, they got there help. was a service. There yeah. was a service. So yeah. it didn't matter if we were getting money from the government or we weren't getting money. You find a way. Yeah. find a way to do it. The neighborhood, um, wow, it was pretty incredible. I yeah. mean, the fires, the abandoned buildings. Um, People were living in those abandoned buildings. So we, we had neighbors on, the, on, on that block where UBP was that, um, you know, they had stole the pipes out of the building so there was no running water in the building sure. the hydrant right in front of the building was always running and there was always buckets around of course, yeah. and like i used to tell everybody when you come through there grab two buckets and walk them upstairs there's still people living in yeah. this building and you know i remember going into buildings that you know there was 50 apartments but there was only three apartments that people were living in sure, you know sure. um and people who would have a fire like almost every day in their building you know it was it was pretty bad i had a friend that came to my house once and she she asked me can i take a shower and i said sure go ahead yeah right and and she was in there for like an hour and a half <laughs> because she didn't have running water where sure. she lived you know? sure. uh, 
absolutely. And, and these were people that were working full time. I and, know. And, and then having difficulty trying to find somewhere else to live. Yeah. I remember walking from Westchester to Longwood, and that was like a canyon of abandoned buildings. The only thing on that block left was the daycare center was in the corner of Westchester, the PS60 was across the street, and everything, and everything else was else empty. Was gone. On, all the way to Longwood. Everything wow. else was empty. And I remember the rats that weren't scared of anybody. Yeah. So like Packs of them. Yes. <laughs> running down the street, you running, had to get out of the way. Right, you had to get out of their way. <laughs> yeah. But... Uh, they would hiss at you. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, it was, you know, how they, you know, the, the government left us to die there. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. It was, it was, it was bad. It was bad. Wow. And so were you all still in John Adams at, at that point in time? You no, know, we, we were in Woody, Woody Crest. In Woody Crest in 1968. 68, okay. Yeah. So the, the projects were relatively safe. Sure, absolutely. They weren't being... They were buildings. They were right. federal, not, not city. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But yeah. if you lived in a tenement, it was... I know. So, something that someone mentioned the other day that um, I haven't I hadn't really heard mentioned as explicitly before in passing maybe but but he mentioned remembering just super after super leaving building after building and that was kind of you know the beginning of the end for that building because mm -hmm. there was no one to shovel the coal which shovel meant no the heat. coal <laughs> and then you know and then suddenly there's a lot more risk of fire with people mm -hmm. trying to find a way to warm themselves and yeah and yeah that was really interesting to me because that and it lasted a long time, a very long time. Yeah. Because yeah. even when I first went to work for the city, um, even that, that was 88. Yeah. You would still be blocks and blocks of abandoned buildings, or when they started tearing them down, then it was blocks and blocks open. A lot of rubble. A yeah. rubble. And, sure. And, it, yeah, it was, you know, I remember going into a, a building, I don't know if it was Edgecombe or Manhattan, but it was like off of 145th Street. Mm -hmm. And like walking up and um, like at one floor there was a, a, a big barrel with fire, you know, that people were heating up the hallway with. Yeah, yeah. You know, and and like the, the locks on the apartments were like chains that went through a hole in the wall and then went through a hole in the door and then there was a big chain in front. Like, oh, you know, okay, sure, like there was sure. like maybe... 10 people, 10 families in that building, and there was like a 30 apartment building. You know, it was wow. pretty amazing. Sometimes there was no lights in the hallway. Sure. So. Yeah. Wow. It, it was a bad. Well, I remember one bad. of the teachers <laughs> in the daycare center, she lived on Jackson Avenue by, by the Woodstock Library. Okay. And she was one of three families still left in the building. Wow. And like at night, you had to, if you didn't have a flashlight, you take rolled up newspaper and light it on fire to walk up the hallway because she sure. lived on the third floor. And, but you would go into her apartment and it was like you stepped into another world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spotless, wow. you know. Yeah, real, uh, a real apartment. It of was, course, yeah. Yeah, but the outside so, of that apartment. And I remember when we were helping her move out of there, like she, she had, she was taking, she was cleaning, she was mopping the floor. Wow. And I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you doing? He says, oh, I'm not leaving this place dirty. <laughs> and she packed up the garbage and, and she took it downstairs and put it in front of the building. Yeah, like pretty much every time, a better landlord than the landlord. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, you're mopping? What are you doing? Wow, yeah. wow, wow, yeah. And, Obviously, U UVP had so much uh, going on around uh, around education and feeding and just taking care of people in general. Did UVP ever get into like tenant organizing or anything around housing at the time? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All, all the time. Yeah. That and anything else that was happening with the schools. Oh, and they closed the library on Tremont. Oh, wow. right, yeah. Okay. We, we, we were there for weeks. Yeah. <laughs> wow. 
we stood there for, I remember, I practically lived in that library. Sure, we sure. Go home to take we a bath and we kept it. it occupied and we had shifts of people coming in so it's because if and we, we left, even, we they would have locked it up and it would have been gone. We wow. even ran an after school program on the first floor with the kids. In wow. The wow. Yeah. wow. And then when they tried to close hostels. The same thing. Also, I was going to ask about hostels next. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And they went to close hostels. I remember that. Uh, we were in there too because um, we set up a, a daycare center for the students and for the teachers, for the professors. Sure. So they could drop off their kids with us and, and go to class and then pick them up. And, and we ran that until, you know, the police were going to come in and arrest everybody. Yeah. Wow. And I was, I was shuttling food from, from the daycare center to the people inside <laughs> so sure. they would have something to eat. Getting blankets and pillows and, um, and cots and all kinds of stuff. All kinds of stuff, bringing it back and forth, you know, going back and forth to bring supplies to them just so that they would be okay. Um, and then they wanted to show a movie outside, so we needed a white sheet. Yeah. But this was the middle of the 70s. There were no white sheets. Sure, sure, absolutely. All the sheets were psychedelic colors. <laughs> so, so the only thing I could find was a, a muslin, which is kind of yellow. Okay, yeah, yeah. So uh, every movie they showed had a yellow hue. A yellow hue. <laughs> <laughs> to, I would find a white sheet, they told me, and I said, there's no white sheet. Yeah, there was a, before the building that's there now, there was like a courtyard in the front of the school. Oh, okay, okay. And we used to yeah. do the movies there. Yeah. And right off of that was the daycare. We set up the daycare because they faced that courtyard and sure. we could take the kids out to play and all that stuff. And wow, that wow. Yeah, that was great. Wow. That, they, they had, the, they moved the desks into the street and they closed Grand Concourse and was, were giving classes on Grand Concourse. <laughs> wow. It was really exciting. And when the police came to arrest the, the squatters, um, the protest, <laughs> the whole community came out and s surrounded the police as they took them, walked with them to the prison. Wow. It wow. was amazing. Wow. Yeah. The struggles around hostels, around, I mean, really and so it, many struggles. And it hostels, wasn't so. just in the Bronx. Sure. If there was something happening in Harlem, we were there. We were there. Yeah. Oh, bed I remember Stuy. going to Bed-Stuy. Wow, that's too, okay. Cross, yeah. Crossing the Brooklyn Bridge in Mass. Wow. <laughs> Until we went over there. Sure. Um, uh, everywhere, even Staten Island, we were in there a couple of times. Too. Wow. So you know, whatever, whatever issue, the war yeah. in Vietnam, yeah, the moratoriums that were, we were there. Yeah. We were there. We had a presence everywhere. Wow. So. And what what about um, uh, issues around healthcare, like at Lincoln Hospital? Lincoln or? Hospital. The young lords took over the old Lincoln Hospital sure. to demand services. We were outside to protect them so that the police wouldn't go in there and bust heads. So yeah, yeah. The whole community was out there. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And uh, and my mother found funding for the Lincoln Detox program. And uh, so that they can continue because they were going to close that down for lack of funding. So she was able to put stuff together so that they could get some kind of funding. Sure, sure, absolutely. And yeah. that, that program ran for like at least, I think, 10 years before mm -hmm. it was effectively shut down. Shut mm -hmm. down, yeah. I mean, you know, tra transferred to something else. But yeah, shut down. Shut yeah. down. Yeah. Really. But it was a great program. It was helping a lot. Yeah. So yeah, health, <laughs> health care. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, everything. But also when they, you know, they, there was some mass sterilization program going on in Puerto Rico. Absolutely. The one heading that program, when he left there, he went to be the director of mm -hmm. Lincoln Hospital. Mm -hmm. Yep. To keep on the good work. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, so there was a lot of protest about that, a lot of organizing about that. and Sure, sure. Absolutely. And then the stereotypes from Hollywood, so that's oh, for the Apache. Oh, I know. <laughs> that was a big deal, too. <laughs> Absolutely. I know. We were in the street every single day. Every it was single the day. The, the filming and, crew. <gasps> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. One time we saw Paul Newman downtown, <laughs> we chased him. <laughs> saying, stop the racist movement. We but, made the money and yeah. it went on. Yeah. Uh -huh. I know. I know. 
But yeah, the video of, of your mom and Richie, I think it's, yeah. I forget, I forget what channel it was on, but, yeah. but that's, that's a really powerful, mm -hmm. um, recording of your, of your mom as well. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, I mean, you know, that, that obviously wasn't the first racist stereotype of the Bronx. There's, mm -hmm. no. there's been many since then as well, but that's definitely. But they were using our, our, our home. Yeah, <laughs> you know? absolutely. They were in in front of us, using our home to promote that those, those stereotypes. I know. It was, it was, yeah. Absolutely. But, but it, you know, any, any issue that anybody had, <laughs> we, were, we were there in the forefront. Sure. Um, so, yeah, it was great. <laughs> and I think. Uh, well, I, well a, f a funny story that Elba told me. Um, I, I know your uh, your mom, and ac actually, there, I, I know about a lot of different people who were involved in the ALP who eventually mm -hmm. were at least initially supportive of Lindsay and, and his campaign. But Elba told me a funny story where I guess Mayor Lindsay called your mom at, at UVP, and she said, "Oh, I'll call him back." <laughs> Just, <Yeah. laughs> she had that kind of um, clout and. Mm -hmm. Just power that you know that uh, not you know not even a um, she you know she would do what she was doing and a, not even a mayor could get her away from it. It was, <laughs> it was amazing. Yeah, <laughs> and they they took over city hall one time. That I remember on the news there was a picture of my nephew Eric uh, in diapers walking across in the the foyer there when you go into city hall. Um, my, my father, he, he made sure that we were home when we were younger sure. and, and going to sleep at a decent hour and he would, you know, provide dinner for us. And, okay, sure, sure, sure. Uh, so he did, a, he did a lot of that, yeah. which is pretty amazing for a man who was born in the 20s to a very machismo society, you know, Absolutely. being able, but he believed in the work that was being done. Sure. And... Um, and he, he loved us to death, so he wasn't going to let anything happen to us. So yeah. we didn't get to go to all of the meetings, but as we grew older, then we, get, we got to go to, like, school board meetings were a good one. Sure, sure. They were a great one because there was always some issue that was ridiculous. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. So, I remember they were doing, I don't remember what the issue was, but there was an issue in a school board meeting that they had to stop? Oh, because it meeting? was the last meeting of the year. But there was some issue that was going on, and I don't remember what it was. Right. But they, they were supposed to vote on something okay, that was yeah. going to take place, effect in September. Oh, okay, okay, sure. And, um, and okay. I know my, my, my brother said, we have to stop this meeting. Yeah. We have to stop it. Yeah. And my, her best friend, who worked closely with her as well, her name was Rosa, she says, I have these, because she had taken a pack of firecrackers off her son. <laughs> <laughs> they actually lit those things up and threw them under the chairs of the auditorium wow. and, and closed the meeting <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, and I don't remember what the issue, I was young then, so I sure. don't remember what the issue was at that time, but I remember the scandal it made. <laughs> so, but they got the meeting stopped and they couldn't make that they couldn't vote. program mm -hmm. change. Wow. Yeah. So in, in the South Bronx, right, you had District 7, which was Mott Haven, and that area of the, you know, the downtown part of the Bronx. And then you had District 8, which included like Hunts Point, and okay. Prospect, it was across Sound the street view. from our office. Sure. And it included all the rest of the Bronx to, to Soundview oh. and to Throg's Neck. Oh, wow. Okay, okay. So in District 8, where did all the money go? To mm -hmm. Throg's Neck, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. And it didn't come to Prospect Avenue. For sure. Because PS130 was in District 8. Yeah, I know. And Cross, got nothing. Okay. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, so it was always a battle in that school board meeting. Absolutely. Always, because they the funds would stay in Throg's Yeah, you know. Yeah, absolutely. So I remember those those meetings were always good. Like District Seven, there was already people in place there that, if anything, 
was going foul, it would be addressed. Okay, okay, you know? sure. But in District 8, it was very difficult because those people in Throck's Neck were very mm. selfish with the funds. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm. So. Absolutely. So as far as, um, I, as, I mean, this is getting more of this kind of uh, racial boundaries in the Bronx, well, then and now, but, um, uh, but would you all go into other parts of the Bronx on a very regular basis, um, either, you know, with your parents or, um, or on your own? I mean, obviously, your, your aunt lived in another part of the Bronx, but any other parts of the Bronx that you'd go into? Yeah, all of them. All of them. Okay, <laughs> yeah. sure, sure, sure. The Bronx was, the Bronx is home. Yeah, yeah. We went everywhere. And did, did the, either... The, the racism... Well, there were certain areas you wouldn't go. Sure, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like country club. Yeah. Oh, so true, that's right. Country club. I, country club. I still yeah. don't like to go there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and maybe Woodlawn, but... Sure. Uh, still, I, I don't know. I, I, the Bronx, I never felt any of that. It was always when I went to Manhattan. Oh, okay, okay. Sure, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, I would feel it. Like being followed in the stores. Yeah, yeah. Um... Being told, asking to look at something, and they wouldn't let you yeah. see anything. Yeah. You know, they say, "Oh no, you can't." Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> but being outright. followed in the store. But being yeah. followed being in followed. the store by the the detect whatever they had the store the store uh, security. Security. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, um, so as far as uh, as far as your your mom goes. You clearly have, you know, a lot of memories of her mm -hmm. at UBP. Um, I'd like to hear uh, memories that you might have of her, either, you know, maybe at the beach or, um, or you know, in, at your home or, or things like that. Uh, well, my my father built his house in Puerto Rico on the beach. Oh. Uh, that was when he was getting ready to retire. So. <laughs> Uh, it was really, it's, it is, it's still there, so <laughs> it's and, and really Salinas? nice. It's, it's between Salinas and Santa Isabel. So oh, okay, it's, okay, okay. It, but it's, it's close to Salinas. Um, when she would take vacation, she was, uh, uh, she used to paint rocks. She would go on the beach, pick up rocks, pick up shells, and then she would, she would come and she would paint the rocks little scenes on the rocks yeah uh, so that was her relax her relaxation and she would read Brief, my mother yeah. would read all the time she was always reading and wow. she always was up to date with whatever was going on sure absolutely all, all the time but she read she read for pleasure <laughs> when she went to puerto rico are, are there particular books that you remember either you know, that she read on a regular basis or, or ones that were her favorites that she might have shared with um, either of you? I'm trying to remember. I don't know. Since she always had a book in her hand, so yeah. I Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's always kind a different hard. one, I'm yeah. sure. <laughs> that's kind of hard. But, yeah. She was a great cook. Oh, okay, okay. What, what are some of your favorite things uh, that you remember her cooking? She used to make... She could cook dinner in 15 minutes. Wow. Yeah, yeah. She, yeah. She, I, I still, to this day, can't. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, she used to put a meal together pretty quickly. Wow. I mean, I, I don't eat beans, but the rice that she used to make was in, incredible. Okay, okay, yeah. sure. And I still, I still miss that. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and she used to, when we were younger, she used to bake and like the birthday cakes she used to make were spectacular. Okay. Like, oh, okay. like I remember one time she made a birthday cake that was a carousel and it had you okay. know the, the thing on the top and the horses around the sides the, the and animal, the straws. Animal wow. crackers. And it was animal <laughs> crackers and the straws to for the poles and like incredible stuff she yeah. used to she used to bake. Um, and and also the food. The food was always Delicious. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, really, really good. Yeah. But later on, I, I was the one that did all the cooking. <laughs> Don, sure. Don yeah. likes to cook. Yeah. 
Yeah, I sure. like to eat, so I like to cook. <laughs> <Same>. <laughs> so I learned from her. I yeah. mean, she taught me how to cook. So, but you know, I, I, like the rice, I never never quite got it to her. To, 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 to that same, pretty good, but it's to not that, mom. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. To that same flavor, I, I, I wasn't able to. Mm. But, but yeah, everything I know how to cook, I learned from her. Sure, yeah. sure. My father used to make. Uh, uh, steak sandwiches, like, and he used to make uh, spaghetti. Else? Spaghetti with with pork chops, cut oh, up okay. pieces of pork in sure, it. Oh sure, sure, that sounds so delicious. good. Yeah, <laughs> so good. And garlic bread and stuff like that. Yeah. Wow. Love that. Would you all do most of the shopping around the neighborhood, or did you ever have to go into El Barrio for ingredients or? No, in the Bronx, by that time, yeah. everything was, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was there. Um, I know probably uh, before we were born, they had to do that. Or yeah. when they first moved, yeah, they yeah, probably yeah. had to do it. But now, I mean, then when we were growing up, it was, it was really there. Sure, sure. I remember I, there were some shops like on 16th Street that we used to go to. But yeah, for the most part, it was local. Like okay. The supermarkets were great. Yeah, yeah. You know, now the neighborhood supermarkets are a ripoff. Yeah. I know. They're so expensive and, and the quality is so no, bad. That's not good. Yeah. Which is a shame. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, when the two of you all were coming, uh, coming up, um, uh, is there music that you started getting into that, say, your parents might not have? Rock and roll. Turn, rock and roll for sure. Turn off that noise. <laughs> she would bang on my door and tell me to turn off that turn that noise down, she would say. Yeah. What, 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 Led Zeppelin. Led Zeppelin, she Zeppelin hated sure. Led Zeppelin. Anytime I played Led Zeppelin, she'd be banging on the door. She really didn't like it. Yeah, we, listened, loud and fast. we listened to all kinds of music. Too, sure. So so it was rock and Motown and you know and all that stuff. I don't think she minded the Motown stuff, but the sure. rock wasn't. <laughs> was her thing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, no. But we grew up in the disco time. Sure. Disco. So I, one thing I remember about my mother was that um, that a lot of the disco songs were all songs, all songs from the forties. Yeah. And yeah. she used to know all the words to them. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. <laughs> wow. Wow. Um, did did either of you all or did your family ever go to places like the Hunts Point Palace or any of the music I venues? I used to go to the Hunts Point Palace. Yeah. I used to go to the Hunts Point Palace, to the Corsica on 86th Street. Sure. Of course. Epoca up by oh, Club yeah. City. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. And those, those were places. And I was going there when I was like 14, 15 years old. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've heard I, a lot of stories. I never got carded, carded <laughs> until I was like 27, 28 years yeah, old or yeah. something like that. Never. Yeah, for never. sure. For sure. Yeah. Could buy cigarettes, beer in the store. And, you know, I was always big too, so, yeah. you know, but like I used to go into those clubs all the time. Right? Sure. Absolutely. Never once was saying, can we see ID? Never. <laughs> until I was like way old already, you know. Yeah. All yeah. right. Yeah. Like in the casinos, right? Yeah. 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 Well, we well, the they never carded me in the casino either. No, they carded me. They carded you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? Wow. Um, and are there, are there any uh, musicians that you remember either, you know, com coming up at UBP or I don't know if, if there were performances at UBP or um, musicians that you knew or went to... We had Char like Charlie that. Palmieri gave a workshop oh, wow. that I remember wow. there, uh, but they, a lot of a lot of them used to come through there, or sure. else they used to play at events. Like in, we we had something in Cortona Park, mm -hmm. and they were like all the, the old musicians were there, so wow. it, was, it was good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to yeah. have that, but that workshop I always remember because he took time to talk to younger people and say, this is what you can do with music and this is how you know and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so since we were just talking about music, um, uh, now um, the, the 
topic of, uh, of early hip-hop in the Bronx comes up, so why, why don't you all speak about um, block parties and uh, the other manifestations of, of the culture that were developing around that same time, whether graffiti or some of the dancing techniques, things like that. And some of them took a while well, to break actually dancing. Develop. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was all around us at that time. Yeah. The, the younger... The younger people were all into it. I remember we used to have like once a month those things at PS130 <laughs> would have these oh, we would have talent, talent shows oh, okay, in sure. PS130. And that, those were great because they There's were a lot of talent there. Oh my goodness. Absolutely. So that's where the hip hop came in. And well, the hip hop book was created in South Bronx High School. Yeah, yeah. So, that's my nephew Joey. We, we took all the photos. Absolutely, I know. <laughs> but it, you know, all of the young people were very much into it. Plus, plus the break dancing, in, incredible. Yeah. And um, um, you know, well, I, I, and the I, dance, the dancing, the different dance steps. You know, even yeah. even with the salsa and all of that. And the, the Latin hustle and something. That the Latin hustle we'll that was a little, well, before. a little bit before. For sure, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, we used to have parties, a lot of parties. Right? Yeah. yeah, we celebrated a lot. Whatever no, holiday. And during the, you know, when the weather turned nice, we would have block parties. You know, yeah. otherwise we were in the schools, but you know, we would have these block parties, and there was a lot of uh, performance. A lot of the up and coming hip hop artists would be there. Oh, yeah. Sure. Um, we, we also like in the boys club on Ho Avenue there was a lot of good hip hop sure. uh, concerts going on or parties going on there yeah 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 absolutely so we used to go there a lot absolutely and so was was the was the crowd a little younger than you or were you right around um, it was probably a little younger a little than younger me. than you yeah 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 yeah, yeah. 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 yeah it was so more was, yeah well. It, you know, it's it's a little strange for me because I, you know, I was partying during the disco era and the, and the salsa like with Hector Lavoe and sure. all those charanga groups and all that. Yeah. Um, but I was also young at that time, but I was still going to the clubs. Sure. You know. Sure. But like, um, but with the hip hop, yeah, I was probably the the group before me. Yeah. Was yeah. Yeah. Really into that. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Um, but music was always a big part of, it, of everything. Absolutely. Um, within the organization and at home. Absolutely. So um, why don't why don't you all speak a little bit about your um, uh, your mother's life in you know the eighties um, the the last last few years of her life. Uh, my mother was very. Uh, Political and my father also very political. Yeah, they were independentistas. They sure. wanted their island to be free. Absolutely. Um, so wherever you know, whenever the UN was making decisions on colonialism, we were there. Um, the, when the political pr prisoners were released during the Carter administration. The first place they came to when they got to New York was United Bronx Parents. Wow! So, so you met you met all of them. Yeah. Time. Oh, they stayed in the house. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. Yeah. No, we had you know, they they were very much part of our lives, and also the next group of political prisoners. My mother. Uh, Saved well, my, my mother and my father together. They saved some of the paintings that Elisam Escobar, so that the, wow. the the you know the government wouldn't take them wow. and destroy them. So they saved some of the paintings. Wow. Um, the and like Dulce Apagán, she she loved her. My mother loved her to death. She sure. thought she thought she was brilliant. She was everything. You know. A, a great asset for us to have and who, you know so whatever was needed my mother found a way to along with other people you know they would get together and yeah. find ways to get them supplies while they were in jail and, wow. and, uh, 
and help with other issues. So, and uh, before, so that that was like eighties on, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So then before that, you know, with uh, Watergate. Sure. She had this little TV she would carry around with her. And the TV was on. She watched every wow. one of those hearings. Wow. Um, it was it was a big big deal. Sure. Um, and that, and that's why I have the I have vivid memories of that and with all this stuff that's happening now. I, you yeah. know, I go back to that. Uh, how it's not happening. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, you know, it, it should be happening. Absolutely. Uh, so very political. Uh, vote. She said, "You vote. I don't care what you're doing. You're gonna vote." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Absolutely. That kind of thing. Yeah, they used to do a lot of voter registration in the office mm-hmm. all the time. Yeah, sure, all sure. No, nope, all the time. Yeah. Sure. Absolutely. Are there are there any um, politicians in the Bronx that uh, your mother had a particularly close relationship with? Yeah, Congressman Serrano. Sure, it's a sure. big deal. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, all of them. All of them, yeah, yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Armando uh, Montano was the assembly. Uh, I'm trying to remember the others. Yeah. Well, like, like State Senator Serrano, we saw him grow up. <laughs> sure. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to remember who were the, the, you know, the borough presidents, the ones that didn't go to jail and went to jail. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. She, knew, she knew everybody. Yeah. And she made sure that she knew everybody. Yeah, absolutely. And told her, this is what we need. Yeah. Always. Absolutely. Uh, Israel Ruiz was the state senator. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what I remember. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and a lot of them came through, you know, as I was saying before, they came through in United Bronx Parents because they had need, you know. They needed support. Sure. So they needed support, well, when they were running their campaign, but before that, they needed support because uh, um, they worked for the Board of Ed and there was no no work during the summer, <laughs> something like okay, that. Okay, so they got yeah. work during the summer. Yeah. That kind of thing. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Um, the The... One of the things that I am, you know, actively recording oral histories around is uh, other women like your mother who were kind of, you know, kind of like a nexus of, mm-hmm. of organizing and community. And one woman, I'm curious, I, I don't know if, if she had a relationship with your mother, but I know they came from similar circles, you know, like in the 40s and, and mm-hmm. 50s. Um, Angie Dickerson is—is is that a woman? Or is that a name that you? She lives up in Bronx Park East, so mm-hmm. it's you know different name. The name but. is familiar. To okay, me, okay. But I, don't, I don't know. Okay, sure. What about what about Queen Mother Moore? She lives in the Bronx too, but she did most of her organizing in Harlem. Harlem, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, she's familiar too. Oh, okay, okay. Um, so I'm very sure. Yeah. Yeah. Because she was she was connected. To everybody. I mean, the, the, it was a network because, uh, like we said before, that we used to find ourselves at protests <laughs> in Bed Stuy and Harlem, Staten Island, 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 you know. Yeah, yeah. Jamaica yeah. Queens. <laughs> okay, sure, 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 absolutely. So I'm sure there was connections there like that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so, you, if if you don't want to talk about this, um, then certainly don't have to but I was wondering if you wanted to share anything around your your mother's transition um, whether it's memories or yeah it's, it's difficult because she went fast yeah it was unexpected yeah and um, she was a, a major force in our lives um, my father, I saw him fall apart. I had never seen seen him fall apart. <laughs> it was it was really hard yeah. uh, when she passed, and then um, with the family, it was like people went this way, where we were always all together. Yeah. Everything was was separated. So, yeah. 
It's, it, it's amazing to see how one person can hold people together. Absolutely. Uh, uh, yeah, um, I know I spent more time in the funeral consoling other people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Than people consoling was, me. Sure. That was four days of, of, of a funeral that there was, was a none. Spectacular. Stop. It was a people coming in. Extravaganza thing. It was packed. It was in, what was the name of that place? I forget. Uh, that funeral home. It's a laundromat now. I know. Wow. Is it in the Bronx? Yeah, it's right yeah. there by where Ortiz is. Oh, on okay. Castle Hill. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, but the one up by Castle Hill, across the William was, something, right? No, I don't remember now. Kind of. Walter B. Cook. Walker, Walter B. Cook. Oh, right. I know so they have a, a four, few around. They had four yeah. rooms. They had four, yeah. rooms. Yeah. They had four yeah. rooms there. Okay, okay. So they opened this room for us, and then they opened this one, and then they opened this one, and then they opened the last wow. one. There was a it was line packed. of people outside. Yeah, yeah. Waiting to come in. Wow. And and then the procession to the cemetery was a long procession. Well, the, besides like the thirty motorcycle cops that yes. followed us. Yeah, it was a big. It was a to big do. deal. Yeah, but I found myself consoling a, a lot of people there. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people. I'm sure. I'm sure. I mean, I I, don't know, I, I'm, I imagine that that was like a hard position to find yourself in because you weren't really given the space to grieve no. or anything like that, huh? No, we didn't even have time to do that. We had to organize all that shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah excuse me. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. um, yeah. Yes, yes. There was no time to grieve then. Yeah. yeah. I remember that. A friend of mine's mother, she sent me Thanksgiving dinner, and I ate it outside sitting in the car. Wow. Yeah, because it was during Thanksgiving week. Oh, okay. sure, sure, yeah. Wow. It was, it was, it was difficult. Wow. And I think that for me, the the grieving came later because I was worried about my father. I thought he was going to go right after. Yeah. Um, I was driving on the FDR and uh, this song came on. It's called Black, Black Butterfly by Niecy Williams. I lost it. Yeah, yeah. I had to pull over because I couldn't see. Wow. Mm. Wow. Well, obviously, you're, not only your mom, your whole family represents such an amazing legacy of fighting for the Bronx mm -hmm. and well and, and beyond the Bronx as well of course um, but the final question I have for the two of you um, what does the Bronx represent to you <laughs> Bronx is home yeah the Bronx is um, I always introduce myself from the boogie down Bronx Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of fight in the Bronx. There's people who come here and live here. Uh, they're, they're ready to fight for their rights. Yeah. Nobody just comes here to, to lay around. I, I don't know, because there's a lot of new people coming in. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. but most of the people who grew up here and who, who really put down roots are, you know, you, you can't mess with them. Absolutely. And that's what the Bronx, that's what the Bronx is, too. Yeah, it's like that, that, you know, famous quote by your mom, like that sentiment, you know, like, you, you can't get us out of the Bronx, no, forget about it. No, you can tear everything down around yeah. us and we're still going to be here. Yeah. And that's the way they it did. is. And they did that in our neighborhood. They, our block used to be all one family house. Yeah. All the ones across the street, they bought off and now there are these huge these, apartment buildings there. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're not... Uh, occupied yet but yeah. when they are it's it's a big <laughs> it's like oh my god you know it's such a big uh, change yeah. so people ask me like if I would ever move out of the Bronx yeah. I said the only place I'm going is Puerto Rico so yeah it's the sure, only sure. other place I'm going for if sure right here I'm Puerto Rico I'm yeah not, I'm not leaving the Bronx yeah and like when I first started working to this for the city they used to ask me if I lived in a safe neighborhood <laughs> And I said, yeah, safe for me. Yeah. yeah. I don't know about you. Yeah. <laughs> it's safe for me. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's why it always blows my mind when I, 
just seeing the news coverage or seeing or hearing people talk about the Bronx, especially people who don't live in the Bronx. Or yeah, exactly. It's like, you know, there, there's no such thing as a, a bad or, or, or unsafe neighborhood in the Bronx where people live in those neighborhoods. I mean, and, right. yeah. Like, I'm no, because we're talking. resilient. We live where we are. You know, the, those things that happen outside of our control. Yeah. You know, like the, those buildings being built or, or during the time of the fires and the rubble and all of that. We, we, we deal with it yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and and keep going and I have never felt unsafe in the Bronx uh, never yeah yeah absolutely yeah, never, never ever felt unsafe yeah. I used to laugh with that all the time you live in a safe neighborhood yeah for me it's safe <laughs> yeah. yeah that's a that's a good reply yeah, yeah. yeah it yeah. is yeah. Just yeah. Like, I know I know where to go and where yeah. not to go absolutely absolutely <laughs> and I'm always aware <laughs> absolutely absolutely well thank you both so much I um I want to be respectful of your time there's you know I I I know we could easily sit here and and talk about your memories for a, a lot longer because I'm sure we barely even scrape the surface on some things but I really appreciate uh, both of you coming up here and um, uh, look forward to, um, to speaking with you all again I'm going to turn the recording sure. on sure. Thank you.